Now by James Carlstrom, former assistant director of the FBI and a man who has worked terror investigations in the past. Jim, good to see you. So where would right. you start here to figure out whether this is indeed some lone wolf who is ticked off because of his trips to Pakistan or Afghanistan or because of his the mother of his child says he just disliked America, hated gays, and thought that American culture was offensive, uh, or whether this is something bigger. Why don't we start right there, Megan? I mean, how many times have we talked about this? You know, we have to have a more imagination. We have to take the political correctness, not, all, not all only off the FBI and the police, but off the citizens in general. Mm -hmm. You know, why wasn't this called in and why wasn't it taken seriously? You know, we've talked about before the FBI not having the resources. I don't want to get into detail, but I can tell you, point blank, they don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. Why are we not dealing with this issue? This administration apparently is not going to deal with it. They could Think care about, less. Um, can you talk about that? Because, you know, we, we, we mock political correctness a lot because sometimes it can be completely mockable and irritating. But in a situation like this, sometimes. what the neighbor says, or the friend, the, the neighbor and the friend, I guess, say, uh, let me just get, get, get it straight. Uh, yeah, so somebody who knew him said he, he disappeared for a while. He went to Afghanistan, this is New York Times reporting. When he returned, some patrons at the chicken restaurant noticed a transformation. He grew a beard. He exchanged his typical wardrobe of T-shirts and sweatpants for traditional Muslim robes. He began to pray in the back of the store. He became more stern. And the folks who watched this said, I didn't want to say anything because, you know, I knew how it would be perceived. Like, he was basically becoming more religious, but that didn't mean he was becoming a terrorist. Megan, you just answered your own question. I mean, why, why did these people not call in? I mean, how many of these bombs need to go off? What are we going to do when one of these bombs kills 100 people or 1,000 people? It's a chemical weapon or a biological weapon or, God forbid, some kind of a nuclear weapon. I mean, we don't know what comes and goes into this country. We really have no control over our southern border whatsoever. I mean, uh, when are we going to get serious about this? I guess we've got to wait for the next administration. I see Hillary Clinton today is talking about, uh, you know, making sure the people that come in get vetted. I mean, that's the first time I've heard that from anybody in that, in that party. But uh, absolutely. I mean, we're all, we're all, we all came from somewhere else. My parents came from, my grandparents came from somewhere else. My mm -hmm. wife's came from somewhere else. But that doesn't mean we have to be stupid. You know, that means we need to be smart about who's coming here. Mm -hmm. And those changes you just described, you know, either the public has to tell us that in, chicken, in the chicken restaurant, the relatives, or the local police. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy came up on the radar, right? He came and, up and on the radar. And had been traveling frequently to Pakistan yeah, and then traveling and back and forth. Yeah, in Afghanistan, traveling, what I understand, to where the Taliban controls yeah, that's right. That's, that's okay, the Afghanistan, okay? So, I mean, that, right there alone, I yeah. mean, I'm, sh I'm sure the FBI, I'm not blaming them. I was there. I don't second guess that. But they just don't have the resources mm -hmm. to deal with all this stuff. And I've said this at least 50 it. times on national television. Jim, always appreciate your perspective. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you.